three, two, one. What's up everybody? Jonathan Gauthier here. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about steering. We're going to look at what is steering. We're going to look at why to steer our horses. And we're also going to look at how to teach our horses to steer, such as how to position our hands, how to position your body and use your body, and how, what type of pressure to have, and also what our goals and what the goals should be into steering your horses. So if you're ready, let's get after it. So first off, what is steering? Steering is just basically like driving a car. It's you asking your horse to go a certain direction and your horse going there. Now you can work on that, develop that, program that, and perfection that until your horse follows your hands and follows your legs and follows your seat, follows your eyes in the directions that you want to go, just like as if it was your own legs. So this is ultimately what I'm after. This is the goal that I'm after. So steering your horse is just from the beginning on, from the first day that you sit on your horse, First, you're going to teach your horse to go forward. Without any forward motion, you can't turn, just like a jet ski. So that is definitely the number one priority. But as soon as you have forward motion, steering your horse is going to be the next fundamental step. So from the beginning on in the round 10 until uh, my horses are fully broke, steering is going to be a very big part of training my horses. Now secondly, why to steer your horses? Well, the reason that you really want to work on steering your horses is not, on just, not only just so that your horse goes where it is you want it to go, but it's also to teach it and program it to go where you want it to go the proper way, the right way, okay? So horses travel in diagonals. They channel their energy from their outside hind through their inside shoulder. So this is how they travel and this is how they should steer. A horse can go from walk in that direction, trotting or lope in that direction to go in that direction, but he could do it by drastically dropping its shoulder or falling out a lead behind or sticking its head up or just basically not react at all or keep going. There's just a lot of things that can happen when your horse is determined to go a certain direction and then all of a sudden you look a different direction and you ask it to go there. And so it's really impor important to program that by having uh, a very clear signal coming from your seat, coming especially looking where you're going first. This is always going to be priority. First, you should always look where you're going. Follow that with a slight mo uh, movement of the shoulders that's going to make your seat cue your horse as to where you want it to go and then your hands are going to follow that by helping your horse keeping its shoulders up and 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 showing it how to to how to perform that steer, how to turn, okay? So I like to do that with my young horses in, 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 in kind of a fun game. Is What I like to do is I like to walk a certain direction and then all of a sudden look 180 degrees behind me as if somebody called me and then all of a sudden I steer my horse 180 degrees to walk the opposite direction. Now what happens at that time is going to be a good indicator of where you're at and a very good starting point on how to teach and develop the, your horse to steer properly because what should happen is is that as the moment that you look in that uh, in that opposite direction you turn your shoulder and you say yes I'm going that direction then everything else should follow smoothly the horse should look that direction follow it up with that inside leg stepping in and and following that with a crossover and then walking in that direction it should be that simple yet what you often see when people change direction that drastically uh, you know or going really from one direction to the other what you'll see is is the horse is going to go there but by by twisting its head and resisting the hand contact or pushing into the hand of the rider or doing it in 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 an over uh overstepped or overreacted movement of the body where at where basically during the movement you met resistance and this is what steering is about is to get rid of that resistance so I'm going to perform that game or play that game to where I'm walking that distance pretend somebody's calling me behind me look there go there and I'm just gonna do that and do that non-stop until the horse can walk and, and I'm not gonna really stop in between okay it's just you know it should be just an instinctive movement for the horse to be walking kind of stopped and then look in the direction we're going and follow me in that direction without any resistance or any tension or resistance in the body. 
So I'm going to program that until that becomes very easy to do. And that is going to be also a very good introduction in teaching the horses how to get into the turnaround and, and spin. But uh, this is a discussion for another topic, but still uh, definitely a benefit from doing that. But it is the fundamental of teaching a horse to steer is that the horse follows your body, follows your hand without any resistance. Now you develop that at the trot, develop that at the lope, and eventually what that creates is that creates balance. It creates a connection between rider and horse to where you steer until your horse follows your movement, keeping its shoulders up, keeping its energy channel, channeled through its diagonal until when you release, the horse doesn't fall apart, keeps that balance, keeps that stride extended, and keeps making that effort to stay uh, in a good position. And that's all gonna be natural, so you're not gonna be forcing your horse to get into that position by trying to manhandle its head or push its hip in directions or whatever. This will come later, this is body control, and, the, and it comes into play in order to perfection and develop a horse physically to perform maneuvers but again this is another topic what we're talking about is steering and that is just naturally going from one place to the other and teaching your horse to, to do that how to do that movement seamlessly and this is why I call this the comfort zone this is why I call my program the comfort zone from the first day on that I sit on my horses when I'm walking I want my horse to stay committed to me and I want to feel like I just need to look that direction shift my weight that direction and the horse just follows me everywhere because it's connected to my butt okay I really want to feel connected with my horses and when I feel that disconnect what I do is I steer and keep my hand in one position let's say my horse wants to go left and, and it's thinking left and I'm going to keep my hand you know pointing to the right and bring my horse back under me between my hands between my legs okay and I'm going to keep my hand there and when I meet resistance this is where my hands will stop okay and when I meet resistance, uh, my, my, hands, my, legs, my hands stop there, I encourage with my leg, and I look where I'm going. When I feel that my horse follows me, finally looks in the direction where it wants to go, I feel that my horse has given at the pole and, uh, and followed my hands, then I will release. If I feel like when I release, I lose control of my horse, I lose that connection, I'm gonna steer again. And I'm gonna repeat that, and repeat that, and repeat that until when I release, I feel my horse stays connected with me. So this is what steering is gonna have for benefit, and this is why it's really important to steer your horses because it creates that connection between you and your horse it gets rid of any resistance and it creates this complicity between your movements now finally let's get into the fun part of this video and that's going to be how to steer your horses i think that from the beginning of riding horses what good riders have always been after is that the horses give at the pole slightly to the contact in order to keep their body straight their shoulders up and steer in the direction that they want to go whenever you have a contact in the horse's mouth at the moment that you ask your horse to steer a certain direction when the neck rein slides and eventually you have contact with the bit so the reaction you want from that you don't want a horse pushing down on your hand or given at the pole at that a uh, given at the wither at that point in time you want your horse given at the pole and this should be all that you work on from the first day that I start to teach my horses how to collect themselves or how to follow my hand and I teach my horses how to collect themselves through steering so what I'm going to do is instead of trying to wrestle my horse's head down I'm just going to take a slight contact and whenever I meet that resistance I'm going to stay there and I'm going to keep my hands real steady and 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 meet that resistance until my horse gives at the pole and follows my hand into the direction that I want to go then I will release and I will do this in the same direction a bunch of times until I feel that when I close in my fingers on those reins I feel that my horse has given at the pole and followed me with its feet and was thinking about its feet and that's what steering is mostly about is to make the horse forget their face forget their head forget their neck but think about their body and think about their feet mostly and where they are supposed to go when you ask them to go a certain direction and so this is why that that's really important so Priority is to get your horses to give at the pole. So it's very normal that when your horse will give at the pole and potentially follow your hands, especially the greener horses, but even the broker horses, that when you're going to release them to reward them, they're going to stretch out and get a little bit undone. So this is when you want to re-steer again and again and repeat that steer. Just repeat that steer in the same direction until when you take, you meet no resistance, and when you release, your horse holds that drive, holds that, that diagonal and, and remains balanced uh, into that stride. And then, her, 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 this is what I call my comfort zone. There's nothing, there's no better feel than a horse really in balance, 
paying attention to its stride, connected with your seat and really channeling that energy through their diagonal. There's nothing better. This is why I call it the comfort zone because it's very comfortable. And this is how I develop my horse, my horses uh, to do reining. And uh, this way it allows me to develop their body and develop their movements into a natural, in a natural way and to, into a natural position rather than trying to manufacture uh, a mechanical uh, collection into my horses. So steering is going to be a really good way to do that. So hand position is going to usually be above the shoulders and I like to have sometimes my hands going towards my shoulder, my hips, sometimes to the outside entirely with an opening rein if it's a young horse or towards the towards the direction that I'm going or towards the inside ear I like to call it if it's going to be a broker horse. So the hand positions is going to be pretty much where you feel you need to have your hands in order to be effective but ultimately you will be one-handed and you would like that your horse steers whether you're steering in that direction or steering in that direction within you know a box that's that's roughly six by six inches and so all you can have your hands way wide open as you're working way high way low if you feel that's what you need but eventually you need to work with your hands going into that um, you know remaining above the shoulders in front of the horn and working by working above the shoulders because ultimately this is what you're working you're working your horse's shoulders keeping your horse's sh shoulders straight and when you're staring you're basically asking your horse to move its shoulders and you're showing your horse how to move its body and how to move its shoulders in the direction you want to go so ultimately I work a lot more often with my hands together above the horn and again do what you have to do but try to have that goal in mind now second the body as I said in the beginning of the video, when you look in the direction you want to go, especially if it's a, you know, a, a drastic change in direction, like a 90 degree change, you're going to be turning in, naturally turning your shoulder. That's going to send a signal, a body signal, a cue to your horse that this is what you want to do. And then you follow that with your hand. So it's really important to look where you want to go and to always also like be clear especially even with young horses or at the beginning exaggerate that body movement so that the horse really feels that and then allow your horse the chance to react to that before you go uh, and, and make him do the move with your hands. This is why that it's very important to be really slow with your hands and always precede your cue with your body and follow it up with your hand. Um, I think that uh, I think that there's an, there's an instance where you may steer with only your hand and keeping your body pretty neutral and that is going to be if you just want to be going straight or you want to be you want to teach your horse to stay your horse to stay committed to a certain diagonal let's say I'm going on the right diagonal and I'm keeping my body really steady I'm my legs are scissored into that right diagonal and when I say scissored is because whenever you're going a certain direction you should have your inside leg always a little bit more in front of the other leg this is why I call it scissoring and until you scissor your leg the opposite way for a lead change then your horse should always stay committed to that diagonal so if your legs are scissored a certain way and your hand is here in the neutral position and you're looking in that direction and your horse switches diagonal by like horses have separate brains so if it switches and stops looking out of that right eye and 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 disconnects from that right diagonal and switch to the left diagonal well this is where you may use only your hand to say hey steer to the inside and remain committed to that right diagonal you don't have to turn your body in that instance because you were already sort of cueing your horse in which direction you want to go so when i'm talking about cueing your horse with your body that is going to be more of a of a change of direction rather than holding on to a certain direction you're going and this is going to be a, a factor when you're especially if you're a rainer and doing raining and you want to teach your horse to stay committed to that circle so this is going to be uh, how to use your body in developing the steering and developing that connection with your horse. Next is going to be the amount of pressure you want to be using with your hand or your legs when you're steering. You heard me say that you should use your hand until you meet resistance and every now and again if your horse is really pushing against you and requires you to increase that pressure then you can pull harder and use more leg. Always use more leg if you're going to be using more hand and you can pull as hard as you want in a horse as long as you pull slow because if you pull fast then all it is is that you're going to very very likely uh, pull through that 
and, and if you can pull and meet that point of resistance and eventually you can even increase a little bit that pressure in order to encourage your horse to give you something and or to think about what it is you're asking and that's okay because eventually your horse will give to that pressure and you can offer that release and this is how eventually your horse will learn to follow your hand but people that are too fast with their hands or pull too hard too quick what happens is that you get past that point of resistance and then what you will obtain and instead is going to be an instant brace the horse is going to brace against that pressure and all of a sudden that energy is going to shift from the body into the neck so you're teaching your horse to resist you by doing that so it's very important to pressure to, to have the right amount of pressure meaning when you feel resistance stay there and then use voice use leg use everything that you can in order to encourage your horse to give to that pressure so that you can offer that release but without without going past that point of resistance so this is going to be uh, this is an, a, a very interesting topic talking about pressure and the amount of pressure and how to apply pressure and we've got a video coming up in a week or so that's going to touch all of the elements on how to pressure and how to use pressure clearly with horses in order to stay on the safe side of things and to stay on the clear side of things so stay tuned for that but anyways i hope that you understand how to not go past that point of resistance when steering or collecting your horses now the final element is going to be your expectation so what it is that you expect from steering your horses well what you expect is that a horse, let's say a young horse, will hold itself in the comfort zone, I like to call it. Let's say that you've steered a few times and then it's holding itself. And some, some horses are way more natural and more balanced than others. Others are going to be a lot more lazy or a lot more, um, you know, magnetically uh, uh, pulled to the gate or to the barn or to their stall. And you're going to be always uh, fighting with that. And, and that, that pull is very difficult to train out of a horse but it's very important to work their mind so basically the purpose of steering is going to steer until your horse is like okay i'm listening to you 100 percent where it is that you want me to go i have no thoughts of my own meaning i'm not like oh i'd like to go there oh i'd like to go there and then you're just reacting no you can't go there no go this way instead no go this way instead what you want to do is you want to steer until you have a horse that's just okay where do we go next because a horse that's okay where do we go next that's connected with you and that's in balance and in sync with the rider is what feels the best because they are centered and their energy is centered underneath you it's not channeled in directions you don't want to go and so this is what feels the best and 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 like i said some horses will have that a lot more natural than others from the start and others it's going to have to be trained hard and drilled hard into them in order for them to to learn to be that committed to their riders but it can only be achieved by perseverance and by steering your horses until they understand that there is this comfort zone that you want them to be that if they are there they are left alone and they can travel at their own uh, uh, at their own style and so this is why that naturally teaching our horses to travel through their diagonal and holding themselves even if let's say I'm loping one of my horses and, and and I've steered it and it's really doing an effort to hold itself and channel that energy through its diagonal and stay balanced but its head it's a little bit mm, stuck to the outside or a little bit too bent inside or whatever I'm not going to try to fix their head position as long as uh, as the body it's doing what it's supposed to I'm headed in the right direction and this is also going to offer a much more uh, natural and attractive and appealing headset to the horse when steering whether you're chasing a cow or you're running around barrels or you're uh, or you're raining uh, you're running a raining pattern when you have a horse that's naturally carrying its headset some may drop their head to the floor and sniff the ground and I get a lot of comments on people saying hey why do you guys like your head so low this is only the result of a horse really using its body properly and being in, in a very relaxed state and most horses nowadays are built to be there and and like to be there and uh, and so I've never forced a horse to put its head down and in some cases it's a problem and I work on lifting it up in other cases it's just a benefit of my horse really using its body very well and then I'm gonna encourage it and other horses will carry their head a little bit more elevated and and that's gonna be as pretty and sometimes in some cases even much prettier than a horse carrying its head very low a natural headset is always gonna be the most appealing headset to the outside and probably uh, and a horse using its body in, in, in the most natural
natural but effective way is also what's going to feel best to the rider. So anyways, I hope that this helped you uh, put, shine some light into why we need to steer our horses from the beginning on and why it's important. And I hope that it gave you some pointers on, on how to do it and it motivated you to go and, uh, and get after it. So anyways, if you found some value in this video, please give it a like. If you're not subscribed yet, subscribe to this channel. It helps me grow. And as always, if you want to see the full version, the full length version of this video, please visit the Comfort Zone Horse Training video series. On there are the full length training sessions on pretty much all of the topic. We have a lot of content when we upload new content every week. And coming up next week will be the video series about pressure and how to put pressure into our horses safely and effectively. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. It was fun making it. I look forward to see you in the next one. See ya.